Hey, how's it going, uh, Dante? It's Jim here from Boston Comic Con, and uh, today we're running the uh, what is this? The fifth or sixth Boston Comic Con. Uh, Boston Comic Con is a uh, it's a uh, four, uh, forty thousand square feet of nothing but comics, t-shirts, posters, anything comic related. It's in there. Superman number one, Batman number one, Spider-Man number one, they're all in there. All those big books that go for millions and millions of dollars, they're right behind us. But this, this is like a real hardcore comic show, where a lot of comic shows, they bring in all these like celebrities and stuff like that. We've got nothing but comic guys, hardcore comic guys. This weekend we have Neil Adams, Joe Kubert, Frank Quitely, Art Adams, uh, uh, J. Scott Campbell, and, and two. actually we have over 200 artists in this room back here. Ghostbusters is a Red Sox fan. Look at that. Rock and roll. What's up, bro? What's up? How you doing? Doing fine, sugar. How are you? Oh snap, it's Deadpool. Deadpool, what's going on, man? Not much, man. Well, technically, uh, he's Kidpool. Kidpool. He's a teenager now. <laughs> All right. Kidpool, easy. Oh snap, it's the new Bay Comics guy. What up, man? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Packing a twin, doing a triz, we is that bent, pausing the flesh, giving you sense of this real hop, nevertheless, nip the best. Hey Dante, how's it going? I hope you're enjoying Comic Con. <laughs> oh, Mario, what's up, man? What's up, Mario? Where's Luigi at? He's not here today. Princess, Cooper, what's up? Where they at? Just my, just my <laughs> right, take it easy, man. <laughs> Alright, for those of you guys who don't remember, Boyfriend was at the 2009 Boston Comic Con. He gave me one of the coolest interviews that, to this day, I still quote this man. Um, he told me to, to keep practicing my craft and to, you know, to continue working at whatever job until I got better at what I did. And yo, you know what's dope, Coy? You know what's ill? I've been a teacher for two years, and I just put my two weeks in the teaching because I got some serious money, like filming. Yeah. So. Um, my transition from my teaching job to like my film life was pain free. And I stuck to my teaching job because you told me to. Yeah. He didn't tell me specifically, stated it, but you, like your interview helped remind me to keep, you know, that, that for sure money coming in. And I kept practicing. I filmed every day after school, yeah. after teaching. I, I mean, so how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that, like, that, that philosophy, that, that strategy? Uh, yeah, I think um, just what I live by basically means you know if you uh, if something you like you gotta work at it. You can't take shortcuts. You can't substitute one responsibility for another. You know you gotta do both until one can really sustain itself. You can't. It's just it's just it's just the way that I, I live. It requires a lot of work, uh, not a lot of sleep, but I, I think it's the. Um, it's really great payoff when the time comes. You know, it feels good that you really earned it. You didn't take control of it. You really worked hard. So I'm glad it worked for you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Look at you. You're doing pretty good for yourself now. Yeah, yeah, keep it busy. Like I said, no sleep. I appreciate it, Coy. You got it, buddy. Easy, man. <laughs> I like this image of Superman. It's uh, from about 10 years ago. It's a. Uh, it's a nice iconic image for uh, for the character, I think. I like what he did with it. Frank Quitely, and uh, I draw comic books um, for mostly for DC Comics recently. Drawing's always been my thing since I was a kid, so um, I, after the high school I went to art school and, um, and then when I left there I was just I was just doing any kind of art that I could. Um, you know, posters for nightclubs, murals in restaurants. But I didn't, you know, I didn't always have, um, I didn't always have worked on. You know, it was either I, I had, a, I had work to do like for like a couple of weeks, and then I'd have a couple of weeks with nothing. So um, during that time, it was in my early twenties. Um, in fact, it was my late teens. Um, I started doing a. I got involved with a bunch of guys that were doing their own comic, like a, a self-published thing, like, a, like an underground like a humor comic. And um, I had read comics. I had read comics when I was a kid, and I just read like Mad Magazine and some other stuff as a teenager. I hadn't been like a big comic fan, and um, and then 
just from just from actually drawing comics from um, from working on my own strips. Um, I really started enjoying just the the whole process of like telling a story like in the comic form and um, and then I, I sent off a bunch of samples to like all the different publishers I could think of and back then there was there was quite a lot of publishers so, like 20 or more and um, I got I think I only got I got a lot of replies like you know like about half of them replied and just said wasn't this the, the style they were looking for but but one one of the, the publishers in the UK got back to me and um, it, that was for um, Judge Dredd it was like this UK comic and um, I did that for a couple of years and then uh, and then I ended up working for uh, DC Comics after that average day for me is uh, I get into the studio and uh, I start drawing and I draw all day and I often draw kind of halfway into the evening um, but when I started out um, I just drew from the first from my, my uh, parents house before I got married and then from um, my own house uh, and I used to kind of work like six and a half days a week and um, now after doing it for 20 years um, I could I pretty much try and keep it down to, uh, to five days a week. If I could, I try and keep the weekends off now. But um, it's still it's still pretty long hours. Um, you know, but you you know you you're your own boss, and uh, I suppose uh, I'm not sure what I would do now after having done this for so long. I'm not sure what I would do now if I, if I wasn't doing this. Hopefully, some other kind of art. It suits me. If you want to get started in comics, um, I reckon the, the two the two things you've got to do. One is you've got to keep practicing drawing, um, looking at how other artists do it. You know, look at books and how to do it. You need to practice your drawing and practice your drawing, practice your drawing. But the other thing you actually have to do, like do like pages of story. Don't just do. Don't just do like headshots of your favourite characters or just copy, you know, like your favourite covers, you actually need to do um, story, like strip pages. Um, any editor you meet at a comic book convention, if you're trying to impress an editor, they've seen, they've seen the whole copying somebody else's work before, they want to see whether or not you can tell a story, you know, like in sequence. That's the, that's, that's the main thing. Practice your drawing and do stories. And of course, um, where I started in Small Press and Self Published, uh, I guess it's probably web comics would be the, the way to do it now. My name's Adam Hughes. I'm a comic book artist. I work for uh, DC Comics, Lucasfilm, Warner Brothers. Uh, I'm a successful commercial artist and I've been doing it for 22 years. And uh, I didn't have the good luck to go to college. Uh, so I had to teach myself. I'm self-instructed. Uh, to this day, I'm still teaching myself how to draw. But uh, I was lucky enough, I got into professional comics when I was 19 years old. And uh, it's... You know, fortunately, the, uh, the American comic book industry doesn't require you to have a diploma. Uh, the, the only qualifications you need are, you need to know how to draw. You need to know how to tell a story and how to be a uh, successful and uh, um, competent storyteller through visual arts. And I made sure that every time I put pencil to paper, I, was, I, I walked away from every illustration, every assignment, every job that I've ever done with at least one lesson learned. Uh, either a positive one or a negative one. Uh, uh, a walk away from a, like I do covers for DC Comics. I've done Wonder Woman covers, I've done Catwoman covers, I've done everybody. Um, and if I, can, if I can finish each assignment and, and come away with um, uh, either a new way to draw something or uh, uh, my, my favorites are the, 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 the bad lessons. When you, when you finish drawing something and you go, oh, that thing didn't work out well there. Uh, that I, I need to change that and I need to do better the next time. I think the, the, uh, an artist learns more uh, when they paint themselves into a corner and then they have to paint themselves out. I, 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 I'm all for positive life lessons, but I think uh, artists 
uh, make greater leaps when they can recognize their mistakes. And that, I think, is the I think that's the heart of self-instruction when it comes to the, at least the visual arts. Is uh, it's okay to sit there and wallow and and, and uh, revel in your successes, but you're not gonna you're not gonna try to improve if you if you're so in love with your own work that you think you're beyond reproach. Uh, the artists who are able to look at their work and go, okay, that was good, but I could have done a better job here, or I could have drawn that foot better, or I could have done the lighting on that hair slightly more uh, uh, slightly more gloriously. The ability to look at the negative and go, okay. I recognize that that's not everything that it could be. I'm going to fix it the next time. That's that's the key to self-instruction. That's the key to growth as an artist. And even if you go to college and you go to art school, um, you know, being able to do that in your professional career and throughout the rest of your life as an artist, that's what's going to make you improve, and that's what's going to make you a uh, um, uh, a, a growth artist and not a uh, like a stagnant pool of water that's like, okay, I learned everything I need to learn in those four years of art school. My brain will not accept any new information right now. Um, uh, being able to recognize what needs improvement is what will make you better as an artist and I think in a lot of areas of life. The nice thing about, about uh, the American comic book industry is the work ethic is very simple. Uh, uh, you have to have the work done when the company needs to publish it. If you want to be a comic book artist and draw a 22 page comic a month, well, it's very simple. You have to have 22 pages done a month. Uh, um, you go, okay, well there's 30 days in a month on average. Uh, you do the math, that's almost a page a day. Uh, it is a page a day if you want to take the weekends off or if you have a family or if you want to go out and have fun. Um, it, it, the work ethic is literally uh, draw as much as it as, as you have to to get the job done when the client needs it, and that goes not just for uh, a comic book art but any form of professional illustration. If the client says they need it on Friday, well, they don't care about your excuses. They don't care about your your, your sick mom or your uh, your puppy got run over. They need the art on Friday, so. The thing, the thing is that uh, uh, each artist has to decide for themselves what their own personal work ethic needs to be. Uh, I'm not the fastest artist in the world, so I have to maybe put in more hours than somebody who can draw very quickly. There are some people who are extremely disciplined. They can get up at 8 o'clock in the morning, they can be at their drawing table at 9, and they work like a demon until 12.30, take off lunch, and then start drawing again at 1. I can't do that. Uh, I, uh, you know, whatever wise person you know once said, "Man, know thyself." They, they're talking about artists because the day I became a more successful professional illustrator was the day when I realized what my limitations are. Uh, I'm not the most disciplined person in the world. Uh, I'm not the fastest person in the world, and I don't control my art. My art controls me. So that, on that day, I stopped trying to like make my art fit into this sort of disciplined boxed, you know, controlled thing. I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to draw when I need to draw, as much as I need to draw to get it right. I will stop drawing when the job's done. Uh, I will sleep when I'm tired and I'll wake up when I'm done sleeping. And it goes for, for me personally, it makes for a bohemian lifestyle, but, you know, here we are 22 years later and I've, I've, I've made a, a fairly decent success out of it. So, I can describe my work ethic, and it might, but it might not apply to everyone. Uh, the best thing you can do is figure out what work ethic works best for you based on your, your disposition, your talent, your time, and your life situation. My name is Arthur Adams, and no one really knows what I do, but somehow I go from city to city, sitting around doing strange drawings of superheroes, and somehow I've made a living at this for almost 28 years. When I, when I started doing this quite a while ago, I, uh, I just got the names of all the editors I could find at the uh, <clears throat> big comic book companies, Marvel Comics and DC Comics, and just sent them, some, kept sending them Xeroxes of my work until someone responded, said they thought that I had some potential, and uh, basically gave me a job. I mean, it's a, it's a very solitary job. It means, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time just sitting in my studio. Uh, trying to get stuff done and trying to do it to the best of my ability in a relatively timely manner, which I almost always fail at, at least in the timely part. Um, and basically, you know, I just try to work every day and just try to do the best I can do. It was always my plan that I would become a uh, professional artist and uh, just somehow continue to keep working out. I, 
I do occasionally wonder if people are going to finally say, oh, we, we can get someone else to do the same stuff a lot uh, cheaper and a lot faster, but uh, it seems to be working out okay so far. But I don't really know how people get into comics anymore. A lot of uh, the people who are working, who are getting into comics uh, these days seem to be doing a lot of their own creations first, doing their own self-published work, and then uh, proving their talents uh, that way in print before they're noticed by uh, some of the, uh, the bigger companies. Um, but honestly, I, you know, I, I, it's a job that I really like doing. Um, and heck, basically, you pretty much know whether you, 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 you like doing it or not. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, but it's a lot of work, you know. You probably end up getting fat and old like me doing it, but it's good stuff. Um, who are you and, and, and what exactly do you do? Very simple. Just a cartoonist. And that's what I do. That's what I do. Come on. Um, do you remember when you first started taking like comic books seriously? When you really started first drawing and really, uh, you know, because you, you believed in yourself when people started believing in you and you started, uh, you know, taking comic books seriously? Well, I, I never, I never thought of it as a way to make a livelihood. It was only something that I enjoy doing. What, what was like your career like? You ask questions as if you ask questions as if um, as if I'm supposed to know some definite answers, and I don't. I know them now. I know what happened now as a result of what went on. But when the things happen, nobody knows. Nobody knows where you're going to land or what you're going to be doing or why you're going to be doing. It. You went to college. Yeah, I, yeah. I finished college, and I got college. yeah. I finished college, and I got a degree in something I don't you use. You, you discovered then that you were interested in what you did uh, and what you went to school for. Or you didn't acquire anything in school that you could use in your life. Is that true? And I mean, I mean, philosophy helped me appreciate perspective, but it didn't help me get any jobs. I mean, I, I didn't. I, nobody was in a hurry to hire a philosopher. <laughs> you know, I went straight to work at a pizza shop right after earning a four-year degree. I was 20 years old with a four-year degree, and I went straight to a pizza shop. Was, it, was there anything that interested you? I applied you? everywhere, man. Well, I tried everything. Well, when you went to school, you went to I wanted to go to I wanted to go to law school or business school, and I saw that philosophy majors scored real high on the LSAT or the GMAT. Yeah. And then, ha like studying philosophy, I realized, like Dante, what do you really want to do? And it, and it wasn't business or law. You want to go to law, you want to go into I wanted film. Like I want, like I really, I wanted to produce why film. Why, why did you select something that was so far? I mean, I was already forty-five thousand dollars deep. I was $45,000 deep halfway through college, and I was like, I could run around with $45,000 debt without it with an incomplete degree, or I can finish it, spend 90, and at least have something in my pocket, even if I'm not using it. Um, so I mean, I got 90 to go. I mean, I'm paying off bills at you know with my camera, something I really I didn't take any classes to film, and uh, I get hired to film every week, and it's it's it's, it's my life now. Okay, then what you're doing is you're educating yourself. Is that so? Yeah, absolutely. You are educating yourself. It's not costing you anything, but you're getting the kind of experience that you wouldn't have had otherwise. You found out what interests you, right? Absolutely. And now you're following it, right? Absolutely. Well, then that's good. That's what we all do. And a lot of us do make mistakes. There's a lot of things, I guess there's a lot of things that I've learned in life that I don't use all the time. But I, I think that one way or another, you, you've learned something that, from the fact that you made a mistake the first time around. So that's a positive. You did learn something from it. You learned what you're not interested in. So what do you have to say for maybe older artists that uh, want to, that it's still... It's never too late. It's never too late. It's never too late. Uh, why, why is it never too late? Well, because it's never too late. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's only too late when you decide that it's too late. For solitude, used to bust in this weaponry till this left is a memory, never waver to end it. Be I shot forever to be the freshest, no end in me. Oh, uh oh, did they got oh, them boys getting that? Yo, oh, yeah, them boys gone blow, whoa, cause they the freshest in the city. Oh, 